around Pennywise and Sinclair. You want a balloon too, Georgie? Before the 2017 film adaptation of It would go on to break records for a horror film's opening weekend and a September film release of all time. Before killer clown sightings would dominate news headlines throughout September and October of 2016. You're scaring people. Not so much as scaring people, but we're walking around taking pictures and if they happen to see us and get scared, then there's nothing we can do about that. Before the 1990 ABC television miniseries would become a cult classic. I, Georgie, am Pennywise the Dancing Clown. You are Georgie. Before Stephen King would release his best-selling 1,100 plus page novel back in 1986. When I wrote the book, I thought to myself, well, I've written some books and I've gotten this reputation as a horror novelist, so it will be my final exam. The character of Pennywise the Dancing Clown has been described as one of the scariest clowns in popular culture. Much like the character in the novel, it seems it likes to take a few decades to sleep before re-emerging into mainstream consciousness to terrify a whole new generation. The fanfare off the most recent installment starring Bill Skarsgård has reached incredible heights with everyone talking about his creepy portrayal of the villainous clown. Get in uh, there, can we see that? Can we, do you mind, uh, just for that camera right there, the, the three. three, yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's a pretty interesting story on how this all came together and how Stephen King manifested the character starting way back in 1978. What's going on guys, my name is Michael McCrudden, documenting everything you need to know about IT or Pennywise here for you on Before They're Famous. Now around this time last year I jump started another channel titled Before They're Fiction. There I documented the creation story of fictional characters including Rick, Daryl and Negan from The Walking Dead. Mr. Burns, R2-D2, Goku, and Slenderman, just to name a few. Now I'm gonna leave a link to that channel down below because we might be bringing that channel back to life. For now, let's jump into this before their famous video. Stephen King's It was first published on September 15th, 1986, making it a Virgo. Now, Stephen stated that he first conceived the story in 1978 while walking through Boulder, Colorado. At the time, he was wearing cowboy boots, and he stated this. They sounded like a hollow clock. I thought of the fairy tale called The Three Billy Goats Gruff and wondered what I would do if a troll called out from beneath me. Who is trip tapping upon my bridge? All of a sudden, I wanted to write a novel about a real troll under a real bridge. Yeah, when I go for walks in cowboy boots, I'm not thinking of shit like that. But this is Stephen King. As he played with the idea for a number of years, the bridge transformed into a city. And what's under a city? Well, sewers. Eventually, the troll transformed into it. And if you've read the book or seen the films, you know that it can transform into any form it imagines that will drive fear into its victims. But why does he take on the form of a clown? Well, let's take a look at the history of clowns, which I've previously reported on in my Killer Clowns Before Their Famous video. The history of clowns dates back to 2400 BC during the fifth dynasty of Egypt, but clowns didn't become mainstream until the early 1800s after English actor Joseph Grimlotti, he created the traditional white face makeup design. The clown image later became synonymous with circuses when Englishman John Bill Ricketts brought the first modern circus to the United States in 1792. Since then, clowns have become a part of American culture, being major draws for circuses such as Ringling Brothers and even America's favorite restaurant McDonald's. They borrowed the clown's friendly appeal for their mascot. You isn't watching TV fun? Especially when you got delicious McDonald's hamburgers. Stephen King had long been fascinated with clowns and saw something that the general public was overlooking. Clowns are terrifying. Their faces hidden behind white face paint and their red lips looking like blood. Stephen would become one of the first people to popularize the idea that clowns were in fact terrifying. Now there were depictions in television and film of clowns not with the best intentions like Batman's arch nemesis the Joker who first debuted in 1940. Previous to this was the 1924 silent film He Who Gets Slapped. <laughs> Despite these few depictions, clowns were generally in everyone's good books for a long, long time. 
Okay, not everyone loved them because you know their facial and body features are a little exaggerated, so the term color phobia was coined for the select few. It wasn't until the 1980s that clowns began to get a bad reputation, and for good reason. If you should die before you wake. <laughs> Eat me. Okay, this is where things get really interesting. John Wayne Gacy, otherwise known as the Killer Clown, had a part time job where he dressed up as Pogo the Clown and attended children's parties and fundraising events in Chicago. Between 1972 and 1978, Gacy sexually assaulted and killed at least 33 young men and was caught on tape saying, You know, clowns can get away with murder. Gacy was sentenced to death in 1980 and executed in 1994. Stephen King never credited John Wayne Gacy as inspiration for Penny. Wise, but at the time, this horrific story was all over the news. One can only assume that it somehow played some role in his creation of the character. Stephen got to work on his horror novel, making it an eternal entity whom existed in the macroverse, which is a void containing and surrounded by the universe. I don't know. After arriving on Earth, it would lay dormant, awaiting civilization to be built up around it. Then it would sleep for approximately 27 to 30 years at a time, then awaken to wreak chaos and feed primarily on children's fears. In the novel, it takes on multiple forms, including werewolves, bats, leeches, and sharks. Essentially, whatever its victim's worst fear would be, well, that's what it would embody. Stephen King's novel quickly became the best-selling book in the United States for 1986. Hollywood was quick to get to work on a film adaptation. ABC originally conceived it as a four-part, eight-hour series, which was later worked into a two-part, four-hour miniseries filmed in British Columbia, Canada. Many differences in Stephen King's novel that never made it to the small or the big screen. This includes a group sex scene involving the Losers Club following their defeat of it. Now I can understand why that never made it to camera, because we're talking about underage children, right? Oh, that's not right. No. Following its broadcast in November of 1990, it was credited as the best TV adaptation of a Stephen King novel, and Tim Curry received plenty of praise for his portrayal of Pennywise. The special attracted 30 million viewers during its premiere, and it was later released on VHS and DVD, and became a cult classic. From there, it seems it, much like its protagonist, would more or less disappear from the mainstream media. <laughs> In 2009, Hollywood decided that it deserved to be shown to the world on the big screen. Initially attached to the production was Kerry Fukunaga as the director and Will Poulter originally cast as Pennywise. Now, If you don't know Will, he's better known as Eyebrow Kid. Things would stretch on for some time with director Andy Muschietti taking over and Will Poulter dropping out due to schedule conflicts. The weirdest interaction I've ever had with anyone was uh, someone who thought I was Sid from Toy Story. Other actors were considered for the role of Pennywise, including Mark Rylance, Ben Mendelsohn, Kirk Asvito, Richard Armitage, Hugo Weaving, and Tilda Swinton. But eventually the role would go to Bill Skarsgård and producer Dan Lin, he stated this. His build is really interesting, he's really tall and lanky, and feels a little clown-like in his movement. When he came in, we had a bunch of different actors read, and when he came in, he had a different spin on the character that got us really excited. Rather than stay true to the novel's original 1958-1985 timeframe, the most recent film takes place in 1989. Production of the filming started in June of 2016, with filming taking place all over Toronto, Ontario, Canada, my hometown. Working with a budget of $35 million, it's likely the producers, the cast and crew all got pretty excited as the killer clown frenzy was dominating headlines during production. The film was released on September 5th, 2017 and as of September 13th, well the film grossed $151.5 million in the United States and Canada and another $66.3 million in other territories for a worldwide total of $217.8 million. And for better or for worse. Well, all of a sudden, Bill Skarsgård face, it was everywhere. Yeah, there we go. 
<laughs> a follow-up to the film is set to go into production in 2018, with the children from the film having grown up and will be set in the present era. So look forward to that. As for the rest of the story, well that's pretty much it because this is Before They Are Famous. My name is Michael McCrady, be sure to check out the Before They Are Fiction link that is down below. Also let us know if you want us to do a more in-depth video on Bill Skarsgård. We'll get that done for you, I'll see you guys in another video. You called for me, Tim. No, I, my server's down. I called for IT. Oh. <sighs> I see the problem. You've called the IT department, and I'm it. <laughs>